Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Purity webinar. So how many of you on this webinar have had a glass of water today? I dare say probably almost everyone. And if you haven't, you really need to because dehydration is a real issue and your body needs water. And so many of us drink water out of filters we have built into our home, or we have countertop filters, or we use the water coming right out of our tap, and we look at this water and it's beautiful and it's clear, and we just don't think anything about it and we drink it. But should we be thinking about it? We should, because so many of us are misinformed about what is in our water and what it can do to our health. My name is Deanna Latson, and I'm one of the founders and chief product officer of Rx. And we're here today to talk about water because water is fundamental to life. Water is what keeps your body going. Water is what keeps your organs healthy. Water is what keeps the planet moving. And really, if you step back and do your research, we are in a crisis of water. What does that mean? Well, we're polluting our water everywhere you look. Our water is being polluted. You know, we look out into the ocean. And, 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 and we have polluted our oceans with plastic. And maybe if you're like me, you live in San Diego, so this, you know, I live in San Diego, so my beach doesn't look like this. Maybe you live in Florida and your beach is beautiful and clean, and maybe you live down in Texas and your beach is beautiful and clean. And so you don't relate to these images. And you think, really, how can this affect me? That all this plastic every day going into our oceans, polluting our waters, affects each and every one of us. Because these chemicals make it into the food chain. And they become a part of our daily lives without us even knowing it. And most people every day, as they drink water or they eat foods that have been polluted by bad water or chemicals from plastics, we're, 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 we're doing things on a daily basis that harm our body and we don't even know. And with a little education, just a little bit of awareness, we can drastically cut our exposure to chemicals. And so you might be thinking, well, hey, I live here in the United States. I live in the United States. And you know, the United States has good, clean water. Well, how many of you remember the Flint water crisis? Flint, Michigan have pipes that look like rats. And if you think to yourself that Flint, Michigan is an isolated incident, you are misinformed. Because there are pipes that look like that all over America. I don't care where you live, a you know, multi-million dollar area in Los Angeles or New York or in the middle of Iowa. These problems are real. And because the water comes out of these pipes often looks clear, we don't have to think about it. So what is in your water? What is in your tap water and your bottled water? I mean, when you look at the list, and this list is just a partial list, you know, first know that most bottled water is just tap water filtered and over 24,000 different chemicals found in bottled water. I mean, that number is, I mean, sometimes hard to even comprehend. And then the kicker to bottled water, people think they're doing something better for themselves, yet those bottles are made of the plastic that leaches into the water over time. So, hey, should we go to our tap water? Wait a second, what's in our tap water? Industrial chemicals and pesticides and lead and parasites, bacteria, hormones. I mean, when you look at the list, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. But like I said, you know, there's hope because there's a really great options out there today and today we're going to talk about one of those options and there's things that you can do little things every day to protect you and your family to make sure that you're getting the purest water possible to give your body all that hydration that it's needed without all the bad stuff and we have some amazing guests on this webinar with us today three really phenomenal people let me um, introduce one of our very first guests on the topic of water Tim Sales. Now, Tim Sales is one of my dear friends. Um, and I cannot say enough about this human being. The way he jumps into research, the way he lives passionately, the way he lives 
uh, with a deep awareness. I mean, this guy, you know, he's an author, he's a servant leader, he is, he's passionate and just cares so much about results. When you look really into his history as a member of the United States Navy elite forces, I mean, he was taking apart bombs underwater. You know, so he's such a such a remarkable human being, and he's passionate about water. So let's bring um, Tim out. Tim, are you there? I sure am. Can you hear me? I can. You know, awesome. um, welcome, welcome to this webinar. And you know, I listen. It's an understatement. You've cr you have created and shared incredible success in your lifetime, right? From companies to author to I mean, giving back to others and. Now you've really been leading the way for clean water and sharing this passion with others. And we really want to hear from you, like, where does this passion come from? And what does it mean to you? Oh, well, that'll be quite fun to me because uh, of all that passion you talked about there, um, I don't believe that anybody becomes as passionate as this moment. If you'll change the slide there. Sure. Oops, sorry about that. All right. So when does a person become most passionate, most aware? Well, uh, for a guy, it is when his wife gets pregnant. And unfortunately, I became that husband no wife wants. At night, I would research things that damage the placenta and or would bypass the placenta and get to the baby. Every morning, I had a new list of things my wife wasn't allowed to eat or drink anymore. Can you imagine? All right, well, one day, <laughs> well, one day I saw my wife drinking water, and I thought, water's good, right? It flushes toxins out of the body. Everybody knows that, right? Well, what if water itself is toxic? Next slide. What you're looking at like several weeks into my research, I had sketched this drawing on my whiteboard. It wasn't pretty like this. An artist did that. But, uh, but follow with me. I want you to look at the very, very tip top there. It starts with rain and snow. It pushes everything to the ground and then into the water. Everything that industry manufactures um, for the home, for the workplace, for the medical facilities, uh, agriculture ends up in our water supply, all of it because of rain. And even if industry uh, burns it, it still goes up into the air and then, it, then water brings it back down uh, and sometimes they dump it straight into it, in, into water. And so then if you look down uh, towards the ground part of that, when water hits, uh, it rains and then it uh, rushes down the street and into storm drains and, uh, and that ends up in streams rivers and lakes. Uh, or it hits the ground and snow or rain pushes it into the ground and underground into underground ponds and lakes and they call those things aquifers. And so what this kind of like realization that I got was everything that industry manufactures ends up in our water. And so it doesn't matter if it's uh, in tap water or in a bottled water because it's pretty much the same. And so that was, uh, you would not have wanted to be my wife that next morning. Next slide. So now where? If you look on the left hand side there, those streams, rivers, and aquifers is where our city gets their water to send to us. These water treatment centers were never designed to get out the contaminants from industry. They were designed to get out bugs like bacteria from feces, also known as poop. In the middle image there, that is what a typical water main pipe looks like. The one you showed from Flint, Michigan was a nice looking one, Deanna. <laughs> um, that particular one, I want you to notice that. That's not rust that you're looking at. That is called biofilm from bacteria. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> do, uh, do yourself a favor and just uh, go two days without brushing your teeth, take your fingernail and scrape it across your teeth. That white stuff that goes under your fingernail, that's biofilm. This pipe in the middle is what carries your water from your city water treatment facility 
to your house, and it doesn't look any different if you're on a well. It does the same thing. The image on the right is what a typical house water pipe looks like. And if you're one of these people who has been sold a whole house chlorine filter, which filters out chlorine, then your house filters are, or your house pipes are going to look even worse. Uh, so, Tiana, that's where my passion stems from. That's so scary, it's not even funny. <laughs> so, um, now, let's see. This is, uh, I'm going to take you over just a little bit there to, uh, to drinking from bottled water. Deanna touched on this, but I wanted to hit this a little bit more from a um, testosterone side uh, instead of estrogen side, even though you know, plastic uh, bottled water has a whole lot to do with estrogen. But, um, but I want you to read this here. Um, it's drinking as little as 0.1 ounces, which is a half a teaspoon of water from plastic bottles, inhibited androgenic, which is like testosterone, activity by 90%. And uh, I read that study in detail, and it was for up to four hours. And so if you just think about the way a person typically drinks bottled water, they may have one or two or three a day. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if it's in a soda or uh, if it's a soda in that plastic or it's water in that plastic, the effect is still the same. In fact, it probably is worse. All right, so it shuts off testosterone by 90% for four hours, okay? And so that's, um, that's quite um, scary for me if, uh, if I'm a man. And um, if you take a look around and you just notice what, what's going on, um, men, um, are becoming, you know, from statistics and things like that, it shows that, uh, that the birth rates of men is, uh, is dropping in ratio uh, quite a bit and has been for decades, uh, things like that. So this is, uh, this, I'm very, very passionate about this particular side of it uh, because I watched a video called The Disappearing Male, uh, and I'm not talking about email or snail mail, I'm talking about the human male, uh, because uh, men are growing... Uh, our boys today are growing man boobs. Uh, they're becoming much more passive and docile. And I think consuming chemicals have a whole lot to do with it. And to me, it's an absolute nightmare. Next slide. And the next one. All right. So um, drugs in our drinking water. The um, officials in Philadelphia did a test, and they discovered that they had 56 pharmaceuticals in, I quote, treated drinking water, including medicines for pain, infection, high cholesterol, asthma, epilepsy, mental illness, and heart problems. Drugs awesome. get in our water. <laughs> awesome. Drugs, I know. Drugs get in our water from, phar from pharmaceutical companies and users dumping them in water also comes through the feces and urine from people who take them that ends up back in, our, back in our drinking water. Remember when I said everything distills down to water? And as I said before, the water treatment facilities are not capable of removing these chemicals. In fact, the EPA doesn't even have a classification of how much is acceptable, right? So uh, if they ask me, I don't think any of those are uh, acceptable. I don't take pharmaceutical drugs. I pride myself on being healthy. None of it's acceptable for me. Oh, yes, you are taking pharmaceutical drugs. No, don't remind me. <laughs> that, uh, that, that restaurant where you grab that water and you drink from the restaurant, that came right out of the, uh, the tap water. Okay, next slide. Now, I'm not going to discuss whether or not fluoride for teeth or anything like that is, uh, is acceptable or not acceptable or any of that stuff. I'm only talking about it from the standpoint of the consumption of it because if you look at the back of the toothpaste bar, uh, tube, it will say that if you have anything more than like a pea size, you should call Poison Control Center. And so obviously that means that if you're drinking it, then it could be a, a, a problem or if you're swallowing, it could be a problem, right? And so if you look across some of those things there, you'll notice uh, I've highlighted a few of them, and that's because, uh, as uh, I said, I'm very passionate about the, the man side, and I, I do a lot of things helping men 
there's belly fat and things like that. And so low testosterone, apathy and passivity, uh, attacks the thyroid, it's attacked, it inhibits melatonin so people aren't sleeping well, they have lower IQ, memory loss, lower sex drive. Uh, so there's so many things that, uh, that come from fluoride put into the drinking water. And so that's another thing that I, I uh, noted. Next slide. Okay, so uh, the next thing is is that uh, what do you actually need to filter out? Okay, so I want you to just picture question number one if, if, um, is if you go to buy a filter, what the person should ask you is what do you want to filter out? And if you don't know what those things are, then you're walking into any kind of gimmick that anybody could sell you, okay? And so uh, what I did on my whiteboard, uh, again, this goes back to me and my wife, um, is, is that I put these things in the category because it was so confusing. And so on the left-hand upper side there is germs. And, uh, and that would fill in all of those like uh, bacteria and viruses and protozoa, parasites, things like that. And then the next category down there is heavy metals, which would be like your lead, your mercury, and all of those, arsenic, uh, radioactive particles, those kinds of things. Then on the right-hand upper part there is all of the chemical treatment chemicals. Okay, so when uh, when your uh, city water goes to try to clean out all the poop, what they do is they put chemicals into the water to kill those bugs, kill the protozoa, kill the parasites, the bacteria, and so forth. Well, that stuff ends up getting even worse because of the mixture of chemicals that are combined there. And then there's also pesticides, insecticides, herbicides from golf courses and from farming and everything else that ends up there, as well as the plastic chemicals. And so, and then there's the drugs. So I just broke it all down into, does the filter get out germs, metals, chemicals, and drugs? Next slide. All right, and so then when I went down to get a filter, uh, I couldn't find it. I then went online, and that was even more confusing. Uh, there were three primary choices, which is reverse osmosis, distillation, and active carbon, or uh, activated carbon. And so uh, as I began to look and study what they actually got out, some of them got out some stuff, or no, all of them got out some stuff and didn't get out other stuff. And so I'm kind of standing there going, no, wait a minute, am I going to have to plug a reverse osmosis machine to a distillation machine that then goes into an activated carbon machine in order to get good water? And then I realized, and primarily this is through distillation and reverse osmosis, is, is that some of these things, they filter out so much that they filter out what's good about water. If you were to just picture a perfect pristine stream out in the wilderness, that water is bouncing and rolling over rocks. Rocks is where minerals come from. And so what makes water so valuable is that it is absorbed into the cell, but it is not absorbed into the cell unless potassium, magnesium, and sodium is present. And so when you filter out so much that you filter out the stuff that makes water valuable to us, then you've gone too far. And so that was kind of the trap or the um, kind of the, the place that I couldn't get out of where I was like, wow, I don't, I don't even know how to move now because of all of these problems with the filters that are out there. And so then that is when uh, purity kind of changed my whole universe because they had figured this whole thing out. And so, Deanna, now you can kind of see... Uh, where my passion comes from and so forth. Next slide and I'll end this. And so uh, just to kind of conclude that story, uh, Mama and Baby, or Bubby as we call him, uh, turned out great and, uh, and our Bubby man sure loves his uh, purity filter. And that's what he's, uh, he's drinking from right there at the restaurant. Now, Tim, the world needs more people like you. And I know for some of our listeners today who've never heard anything like this, it can feel a bit overwhelming. Um, but here's the good news. We've done the homework for you, right? We've got the guys like Tim Sales and two other remarkable guests on this webinar. And we have the proof, and we've, we've done the work for you to provide something of excellence so you could have safe water. And, you know, Tim, when you show me those pipes, I, I mean, I really like gag. 
<laughs> it's, so, it's so scary. And, and everybody listening today, they have to remember, like, life cannot exist without water. And we have to con constantly add fresh water into our body to keep it properly hydrated. And it is, it is a miracle cure for all types of ailments, right? Headaches, fatigue, and we could go on and on. Because we can go weeks without food, but what, is it three days without water? And so, so Tim, everything you said, which is so valuable to get people to think about what even causes the problem, what is the problem, and, and, and hey, there really is a problem I need to be aware of, now what can I do to provide a solution? And so now we're going to move a little bit into the solution. Thanks, Tim, for joining us. And I'm going to introduce our next guest. And Great. our next guest is Dennis Brown. And Dennis Brown, I mean, this is an industry expert. I mean, Dennis, I don't want to age you, but I think you've got uh, some over 39 years of experience. Do you know? Something like that, an oh, inventor with over 20 patents. He is an industry expert in the water purification um, arena. And one of the best things you can do in life is surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are because it helps you rise to the top. And I, I got to tell you, Dennis is one of those guys. He, he kind of lives and breathes water purification, understands it, has been in the industry for a very, very long time. And we're um, very happy to have you there. Dennis, you're there? Thank you, Deanna. That's great. Yeah, so, so Dennis, let's talk about purity a little bit. Let's talk about this, this filter that we're here to offer as a solution to the problem today. And, and I'd like to, as the developer of the purity filter, I'd like to ask you what you think, you know, what was your most important considerations when you're thinking of, through this design? And I'll show everybody the design. Well, Deanna, <clears throat> we knew from the start of this project with RX that improving the flow of the filter was a major consideration. When we designed the original RX filter, we created the most powerful biological and chemical purifier on the planet. And we had a mandate from RX to make it as small and compact as possible. So we got the performance, but because of the size constraints, the flow was a little slow, and it was a little uncomfortable for some users. So we knew that this filter had to perform, and it had to flow like a fire hydrant. Yeah, well, that's definitely helpful, right? And, and, and so people can drink through it without any problem. But, you know, tell me also, like, what is your favorite part about the design of this? Like, re really, what makes this filter shine? Well, there's been a lot of recent uh, improvements in the filtration media that is available these days. Uh, that, along with some special design considerations, our engineers are able to improve the flow by three times over the original filter while only slightly increasing the physical size and still giving it the ability to remove all of the harmful contaminants that the previous filter did. Uh, in many cases when the user drinks through this filter uh, they're not even going to know that they're drinking through an incredibly powerful filter. They're going to feel like it's drinking through a straw. Yeah, that's great. And you heard you were on earlier when you heard ta um, Tim talking about all those contaminants and really being a part of a filter that addresses all those categories in one filter. So can you touch on that really quick and touch on how important it is to have high quality materials in this filter? Absolutely. You know, Tim is is completely correct about uh, the quality of the materials and the importance of using the right plastics. Sometimes we group all plastics as being bad, but if we look around, it's pretty impossible to live on this earth without plastics. So it's important for us to know which plastics are harmful and which plastics are not. And, and the properties of those plastics. So quality materials is one of the key factors in making a great filter. I want you to think about this, Deanna. You buy a filter to protect yourself 
and your family from harmful contaminants, right? Yeah. So if the filter is made of inferior materials, it may actually be adding contaminants to the water that you're trying to clean up. That's so scary. The science of filtration is also material science. The materials that make up the filter in connection with the media and the design all work together to create the magic behind the performance of the purity home filter. So when you use a purity home filter, you can be assured that not only are you removing the contaminants that you're concerned about, you're not adding any other contaminants into the water that wasn't there before. And you're removing all the stuff you don't want, so you're giving your body a really clean, pure source without any of the problems. Correct. So, listen, there's a lot of filters on the market that have super complicated instructions. They're like high maintenance, right? They require back washing or, or like um, mold and mildew during storage. This filter is super low maintenance. Can you explain to our listeners why? Absolutely. You know, uh, Deanna, most people just want to drink safe water, right? Yeah. They don't want to have to change their lifestyle a whole lot to do that. We've learned that if something is difficult or if it requires a lot of maintenance or change in the way we normally do things, that people just stop doing it. Let's face it, we all want the benefits of a healthy lifestyle, but how many people are really willing to make big changes to accomplish that goal? So our approach is to design a filter that had the least possible impact on your normal lifestyle. Here's what it amounts to. You simply attach a filter to the straw of your water bottle, fill it up, and drink like normal. There's no need for any special storage instructions because the filter has proprietary natural antimicrobial built right in. So you don't need to worry about storing it wet. You can store it right in the bottle. There's also no need to service the filter or perform any kind of complicated backwashing or other procedures to restore the flow. It flows great throughout the life of the filter. All you have to do is replace it when it's recommended, and you'll always be assured of the maximum protection against waterborne contaminants of all kinds. It's that easy. Yeah, that's really remarkable. And I just want to applaud you because you are the inventor you are, um, you know, you're the guy behind the scenes with all the expertise. We're so grateful for that. Is there anything else you'd like to, to tell our listeners about this filter? Well, I think the way to get somebody to find out how great this filter is is to give it a try. Um, we are excited about this filter because it represents a major step forward in what we've been able to do in technology and in making it simple and easy to use for the user. So we're excited, Deanna, and we hope that everyone else is as well. You know what? I think everyone is going to be, Dennis, and we're really changing water filtration. We're cutting edge. We partner with the best. Dennis, you were, you were one of the best. We're uh, happy to have you on today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, let me introduce our next guest, um, who is Tom Jackson, our Executive Director of Product Development and Regulatory Affairs in, um, at Rx. Yeah, Tom and I work close, more closely than anyone else in the company. This guy, he is also passionate. I think you're going to notice a theme with the folks we have on board here today. You see, you surround yourself with people who are smart and passionate, and you can create remarkable things that change the world. I mean, it sounds really big and grand, but that's what we're doing, folks. And Tom is one of those passionate people as well. 20 years industry experience. He runs research and development, quality assurance, regulatory affairs. This guy's the guy that puts all our things through the tests. He makes sure that it's not just us telling you our filter is great. It is other people, third party, who don't really care about us, verifying that this filter is everything we've said it is. Tom, are you there? I am. Welcome to the webinar. And so, 
let's talk about this filter. And um, first of all, like, let's talk about the testing. What makes our filter unique is really the testing we've done, uh, the performance testing. Can you tell us about this process? What company yeah, I... conducted the test? You know, a little bit about the company. Why did we choose them? Like, give everybody an insight into your mind. <laughs> I don't know if we want to go there, but I, I can talk about the labs. And you, you know, you hit the nail on the head. You know, our team has the responsibility of making sure all of our products. In every, in every brand and every line are manufactured to meet the high standards and the specifications that we set, that we create. And you're right, the best way to verify this and the approach that we have always taken is through independent third party testing. So just like anything else that we make, the results of the purity water filtration system have been independently tested um, against international, internationally recognized standards by industry-leading um, independent labs in the U.S. and Canada. So why did we choose these labs? Well, the two labs that have done the testing, uh, BCS Labs in Florida and Maximum Laboratories in Canada, are chosen because these are uh, ISO-accredited facilities. Um, BCS, for example, is also a member of the U.S. EPA uh, Environmental Testing Laboratories Program. They're a member of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Elite Program. Um, these are the labs that everybody goes to when they need true, verifiable, and, and, and the best testing that can be done and true, verifiable results. And these are labs that do the testing of environmental samples, whether that's water, soil, um, anything else that other labs just simply don't or can't do. So these are truly the best of the best, and, and these are the labs that we have partnered with. And like you mentioned, these labs have no stake in our product. They don't care if our product passes or fails. They get paid either way. They just do the testing and report the numbers. So again, that's the approach that we've always taken, as you know, and that's the approach that we'll continue to take, and, and so that you're not taking our word for it. We can show you these test results when this product launches. We're going to publish these test results um, so that anybody can look through, see how we compare to NSF or EPA standards, and look at these numbers and, and truly decide for yourself how, how good and how broad spectrum, and I'll kind of explain what that is in a minute, but really how good this filter is across the board. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. You said something I think a lot of our listeners do not know what it is. Can you tell us what an ISO accredited facility even means? Yeah, so ISO is the International Standards Organization. This is, this is one of the leading international organizations that sets global worldwide standards. So everybody, whether it's a test, uh, a test lab in the U.S. or Canada or Europe or Asia, they, uh, they test to the same standards, um, ISO standards, international standards, organization which which um, creates the protocols, creates the test methods, creates how these labs are supposed to do things step by step by step. And so to be accredited by ISO, to be accredited to do these tests means that you have the capability and the equipment and the know-how and the resources to be able to follow these test methods exactly step by step by step so that the results are ironclad. That's great. Thanks so much. Now, let's talk about the study results. But before we do that, I really want you to explain a few key testing terms. Like, and what do they mean for our tests? Like logs or emerging contaminants. You know, words like that that the average consumer doesn't even know what it means. Yeah, so um, a, a, quick, uh, a quick math lesson, I guess. Um, what is a log reduction? We'll, you'll hear us talk about that when we talk about how this filter um, removes five logs of bacteria or three logs of virus or whatever that is. Well, what is a log reduction? So log, the, a logarithm is just a scale where everything is based on factors of 10. So a one log reduction in something is a 10 times reduction. So if you have 100 and you reduce that by one log, you reduce it 90%. If you reduce it by two logs, you reduce it by 99%. Three logs is 99.9. .9. So you can see this pattern where every log that you reduce something by is adds another nine to the score. So you're so people see these results. Um, they'll see these numbers um, on our product, on competitors' product, or whatever. Well, this is what they mean. So you'll see a bunch of nines on a score. What does that mean? So 
99.9999 is what this filter filters out of bacteria. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's six logs of reduction, which means it has now gone through, it's, it's six times 10. So you can, you can imagine, actually, maybe a better way of representing this is if you go to the next slide, we can look at the reduction. So let's say you start with something and it's got a thousand bacteria in it. Well, if you reduce that by one log, now you're down to a hundred bacteria. If you reduce that by another log, you're down to 10 bacteria. Another log gets you down to one lonely single bacteria. Anything else and really any trace of that bacteria is gone. So you can see when you see these numbers, this is, this is a, a better way to visualize this is that every nine that you see on these scores, everything past the decimal is just reducing this by 10. So 1,000 becomes 100, quickly becomes 10, quickly becomes 1, and, and so forth and so on. So you can see that these numbers that we're going to publish and, and put out there for this filter are really, really amazing in some cases and far, far exceed um, any standards like EPA standards or NSF standards, which are sort of the minimum um, allowable uh, quantities in water. And so the, these scores really are fantastic, which again speaks to the, the work that Dennis and his team did in designing this filter. Well, that's fantastic. So tell us about the most exciting results of the study. What are our two or three key points that our listeners should take away? Well, here's the key point that I think, and, and this, is, this is what we refer to as broad spectrum removal. So one of the key things and what's, what's just really neat here is that this filter across the board has great removal numbers. So we're talking about microbial numbers, inorganic chemicals. This is things like heavy metals, uh, things like pesticides, herbicides, disinfectants, and then something that we call emerging contaminants. Um, uh, Tim kind of touched on this a little bit. What are those things that are that are emerging contaminants? Well, they're things that aren't regulated. There is no regulation that exists and, and no minimum allowable number, but they're still in our water. These are things like pharmaceutical drugs, antidepressants, hormones. Um, this is what we talk about when we talk about emerging contaminants. And so as you look at the results, um, not only do we see uh, removal in things like bacteria and virus and protozoa. These are the things that are going to make you sick, that are going to send you to the hospital. But we're, we're also removing the things that cause long-term health problems, like the heavy metals, like the pesticides, like the disinfectants, and these emerging contaminants that Tim touched on, uh, which have far-reaching health concerns and ramifications. So what's really cool when these, when these full results are are published, not only do we exceed the standards for bacteria, for protozoa, for volatile organic compounds, for heavy metals, but we also have just amazing removal numbers in these emerging contaminants, which is really what sets us apart from any other filter on the market. So I think that's probably the, the one thing to remember. Now the fact that this was done in a filter, and Dennis talked about the mandate that he was given for requirements for high flow. The fact that these were both done at the same time that we have just these amazing removal numbers and high flow, and by the way, very high quality bottles using Triton polymers and stainless steel. This is not just an upgrade for us. It's a brand new system. This is a game changer. This is uh, something that is just head and shoulders above uh, anything else. Um, just if you'll indulge me just for a minute, I you know I grew up in Utah. Outdoor activities like hiking, mountain biking, skiing, fly fishing. This has been my way of life for 40 plus years. And I, I'll tell you, I have gathered a shelf full of water bottles and filters over the years. And every time I'm excited when I buy one because I think maybe this is the one that's going to do everything for me. And I'm let down every single time because there's always something they don't. To, Tim talked about the limitations of different types of water filters. You look at how difficult some are to maintain, how difficult they are to suck through, all of these things. It's just not an issue with the purity filter. It's, it's something that's just amazing um, because none of these limitations exist with this. It, it is a, I think it's a marvel of engineering and the fact that Dennis and his team of engineers have been able to do this uh, is, is just truly something spectacular. 
It is spectacular, and we're always striving to do things differently, and you're a big part of that by making sure that we're getting verified by organizations who are really tough. Yes, they are. These are not, these are not easy standards to meet. They are not easy, easy standard to meet, um, and we applaud you for putting us through those types of testing. So thank you, Tom, so very much for that. So, all right, we talked about water. We know that life cannot exist without water. It just can't. I mean, what, three days, right? Your water, your body is comprised of almost 80% of water. It regulates all types of um systems in the body and everything from daytime fatigue to uh, digestion issues can often be rectified by good high quality water and you know it's it's so vital it has such a vital role in nearly every body function and the lack of water is is so problematic for our health and well-being of us and our loved ones. Even a 2% drop in your body water can trigger fuzzy short-term memory trouble. With, that's like trouble with basic math or focusing on a computer screen, any of that. I mean, it's just so important for those of you trying to lose weight. And it's essential for a proper nutrient absorption. We could go on and on about water's most critical role for your health and well-being of you and your family members. So not only did we create a filter, that allows you to get good clean water to make sure that your body is functioning at the best level possible but we also have another movement in mind we recognize that plastic is an epidemic and it's an epidemic that's facing that's that's we all have to face one person using a purity water bottle filter will save over 3,000 plastic water bottles per year. Each RX filter saves over 400 plastic, 450 plastic water bottles. I believe we all have a duty. We have a duty on this planet to take care of the planet for our children and our children's children. And this is one way not only you could provide yourself with healthy water, but to help our planet. And look at these numbers. Consider this. If 50,000 people use this filter, 135 million plastic water bottles would no longer be needed. And that's a mission I'm going to sign up for, a mission I hope you to I hope that you sign up for because drink safe clean water and you're doing your part at the same time. That is a win-win beautiful mission for our family, friends and our planet. So who needs this filter? Well, people you care about, you, people closest to you, you know, have any of the symptoms of issues that we've discussed, like poor digestion, low energy, needs to lose weight, you know, um, gifts. I mean, heck, what a beautiful gift to give someone for a birthday or a wedding or an anniversary. People closest to you, your kids, I mean, really your kids, hook this thing onto their backpack when they go to school. Your hikers your rock climbers, your snowboarders, your bikers, your friends in yoga, the list doesn't stop. Your friends who live in California and need some filters to set aside in case of an earthquake for preparation. I mean, everyone needs clean water. So, I mean, this list can go on and on. We're here for you. It's exclusively at RX. We're cutting edge technology. Do your part to help your family be healthy and at the same time, create a better planet. Thank you for being with us today, and we surely hope you enjoy your purity home water filter.